this is the continuation of the uh, lecture video for item number 311 the portland cement concrete pavement now as mentioned for the uh, portland cement only the type 1 portland cement shall be used unless otherwise provided for in the special provisions now uh, my warning as for the different brands or the same brands from different meals they should not be mixed nor shall they be used alternately unless the mix is approved by the engineer Run as much as possible so na iisang klase lang ng brand ang gagamitin here are the minimum testing requirement for the portland cement tandaan yung item natin is yung cementado na nakalsada and yung discuss natin isa-isa is the materials na ginamit to construct yung nakikita na natin na nadadaanan na natin na kalsada. So, yung Portland Cement, ang minimum testing requirement niya para sa semento is one quality test for every 2,000 bags or fraction thereof. Sa estimate kasi, madedetermine na natin kung ilang bags of cement ang gagamitin in every kilometer of road work na gagawin, the road work project. Now, in every 2,000 bags or every butal, so meron kang one quality test. Yung test na yan is ginagawa para dun sa semento. Sa pagkuha ng sample, 10 kilos or one bag of cement to be taken or delivered 2,000 bags of cement in the project site. So, kukuha ka ng 10 kilos or one bag of cement sa every 2,000 bags or fraction thereof na hindi deliver dun sa site para yun yung test mo. Okay? So, that is for the cement. The next one is the fine aggregate. The fine aggregate or the sand are materials passing the number 200 sheave and shall not contain more than 3 mass percent by washing nor more than 1 mass percent each of clay lumps or shale. Okay. So, it is a warning about the clay the presence of clay then we have there uh, five cycles of sodium sulfate soundness test that is uh, <coughs> determining for the uh, presence of organic impurities now for the uh, determining kung merong mga clay lumps for presence of clay here is the required grading ito yung mga kailangang emit when uh, doing the grading test now for the coarse aggregate or yung mga bato, graba shall not contain more than 1 mass percent of material passing the number 200 sheave by washing no more than 0.25 mass percent of clay lumps nor more than 3.5 mass percent of soft fragments. <coughs> so, sa mga bato, it is warning again for the presence of clay and yung mga soft fragments or yung mga hindi naman classified as mga bato. And then, for the grading, ito, nakalagay na, naka-specify na, so, these are the grading requirements for coarse aggregate. Now, since mga bato yan, for the coarse aggregate, we will be conducting the Los Angeles uh, abrasion test. No, it should be Los Angeles abrasion test. <coughs> so, here are the tests to be conducted. Pansinin na nasa surface na yung, uh, yung material na 
<clears throat> kinakandak natin ng test. Mas maliit na siya compared dun sa embankment at saka sa item 200 at 201. Sa grading test for item 311 para sa kanyang core aggregate uh, uh, for its uh, fine aggregate <clears throat> it is 75 cubic meter for the grading test then 1500 cubic meter for the quality test and the quality test for the other uh, quality and then we have the course aggregate para sa course aggregate we have the 70 per per 75 cubic meter we have one grading test and then for every 1500 cubic meter we have quality tests Next material para sa nagawa na na kalsada is the reinforcing steel, mga bakal. Now, uh, nandito yung mga specifications niya. So, tie bars shall be the four bars that are to bend and re-strengthen during construction and shall conform to the requirements. For the dowel bars, it should be plain round bars where one half of the length shall be painted with one coat of approved lead or tar paint and shall conform to the requirements of Ashto M31 or M42 the grade 280 deformed bars para sa tie bars plain round bars para sa dowel bars <clears throat> difference nila is yung deformed bars yun yung mapapansin yung may corrugation <clears throat> for the plain round bars naman plain lang siya from the word plain wala siyang corrugation dun sa uh, bakal here are the tests para sa bakal <clears throat> for every 10,000 10, kilos nang i-deliver nila of course nakatrack-track yan for every 10,000 kilos, one quality test ang ikakandak mo. Ang quality test na yan, we have the yield test, the, the tensile strength, the elongation, mass variation, and the phosphorus content. And then, when uh, getting a sample ng uh, bakal for every 10,000 kilos, we are taking 1 meter long so dapat kinuha to dan sa job site so as to represent yung na deliver na na mga bakal kasi kung hindi mo gagawin yan na hindi yung nandun na mismo sa site pwede kasi madaya yan like kumuha ka na ng magandang quality doon sa pinagbilhan mo pero yung nasa site hindi pala maganda yung quality kaya you have to make sure that the sample you are taking, the materials that you are taking, are always nandun na sa site or na-deliver na, na. Para alam mo na yun talaga yung tinitest mo, hindi yung uh, pinipeke yung test results. The next material, which is also an important part, is the water. So, water, when used in mixing, curing, or other designated application, shall be reasonably clean and free of oil, salt, acid, alkali, grass, or other substances in due use to the finished product. So, imagine mo kung may salt yan. So, yung, bakal, yung uh, cementong, cementadong kalsada, kung may nakahalong bakal yan, the salt will help in the corrosion of the, the uh, metal. Kaya iniiwasan, dapat yung uh, gagamitin mong tubig shall be free of this mentioned. Water which is drinkable and known of potable quality may be used without tests. 
Okay. Next, for number 6, we have the joint fillers. Ito yung uh, nakikita nyo binubuhos. It is uh, mixed asphalt or rubber filler. Binubuhos yan dun sa mga joints sa kalsada. Then, we have the minimum testing requirement. 1. Quality test per joint filler for each shipment of joint filler. Then, we have the concrete. Ito na yung finished product. Yung uh, concrete mismo. So, may mga specifications na nilagay. Dapat yung flexural strength niya at, at 14 days should be 550 PSI or 3.8 MPA. Now, when tested by the third point method, it should be, oh, no, no. When uh, tested for the third point method, it should be 550 PSI. And when tested by midpoint method, it should be 650 PSI. Ang ginagawa dyan is, yung finish na nakalsada, kumukuha ka ng core samples, drill, you will drill a core sample dun sa finish na nakalsada. for the compressive strength. But, for this flexural strength, so take note, cylinders, drilled cylinders for the compressive strength, for the flexural strength, we will be using the beam. So, my mold eh, we will mold yung mga yan, yung ibubuhos mo na mga simento konkreto will be uh, molded into a beam and then itong beam na to ito yung kakandakan ng test so we have two the cylinder and the beam okay so these are the most common na items for the roadworks and uh, cannot discuss all of them because there's a lot so I just uh, chose kung ano yung most common na item of work na ginaga ginagawa sa road projects